Hello, my dear friends, my name is Alberto. Welcome to this episode of AMP for WordPress. In the last episode, we installed and activated the official AMP plugin and configured it to use the reader template mode. I am very excited because in this episode, we are going to learn how to take advantage of the plugin's ideal configuration, the standard mode. Let's remember that the ultimate goal we have as content creators and publishers is to bring great experiences to our users when they engage with our content. And great user experiences encompass many factors, and we must nail all of them down, including performance, accessibility, monitoring, security, monetization. We call all of these success factors. The performance success factor is particularly important and significantly complex. It's very challenging to do well. And AMP is a powerful and cost-effective tool to help us nail down the performance and accessibility part of the success equation. And for us WordPress creators, the AMP plugin enables us to take advantage of AMP in our WordPress sites. The ideal configuration option for the plugin is the standard mode because it enables us to bring the power of AMP to our whole site and we don't need to have two versions of the site, one AMP and non-AMP at all. If we keep our site with AMP in standard mode, we are effectively reducing the development and maintenance costs because we don't have to spend resources trying to reach great performance all the time and keeping our sites there during their lifetime. There are two situations where the standard mode can be used. If we are building a new site or we want to recreate our site from scratch, we can easily use standard mode by choosing uncompatible components as our site theme and plugins. This means that we do not need to be technically savvy to take advantage of AMP in standard mode, but we need to ensure that every component that we add to our site is incompatible. The other scenario is when we are technically savvy or we have resources to invest on development. Then we may explore different components and if there are a few incompatibilities issues here and there in some of the components, then we can leverage the development support the plugin offers to help us address them and get our site back to full and compatibility in standard mode all the time. Let's create a site for Sara. Sara is a yoga instructor and she wants to have a good online presence to engage with her community and students and provide information about her yoga practice. Now, Sara is not a developer and she doesn't have the resources to hire developers, but she knows the importance of bringing great user experience to her users and wants to leverage the power of AMP. She decides that she's going to set up a site using only incompatible components so she doesn't have to worry about performance and she wants to do this without having to do any coding at all. Let's get in the computer and make this happen. If you want to follow along or if you want to do this later on by your own, you can install a WordPress local site on your machine using any of the options that are out there. There is Vagrant, Desktop Server, Local by Flywheel, XAMP, and, and many others. Pick one that you like. I'm using Local by Flywheel because it's easy and effective. I'm used to it and I really like it. So here we are, the way I'm having my coffee in my AMP cup that I love. It gets me awake very fast. Uh, so here is my local site. Since this is a brand new installation, uh, the site is using the latest WordPress core theme, this 2021. You know, traditionally, there has been a so-called WordPress core theme every year since 2010 or so. Uh, these themes are usually very good, especially as a starting point. Uh, so you can start with any of them and then get going. Um, and then later on, you can either expand them you know, by investing some development on them, or you can switch to another option, commercial option perhaps, that offer more configurations and things like that. But these are very good themes to start with. So in this episode, we are going to look for themes that are out there and we're going to pick up one that actually serve our purposes. For building the site for Sara, we want to use one of the best themes in the ecosystem today. And it's the Astra theme. Astra is a very popular theme, has about uh, 1 million installs more. Um, and the reason behind its popularity is that it's a very high quality theme, it's very well built. Um, it comes with nice designs, some powerful capabilities, and they have full incompatibility built in. Now, Astra offers a free version that you can use, um, which is nice and powerful, and they also have the option of upgrading to Pro. 
and there are different price tiers. You know, you can, if you are an individual um, site owner, th then you get a, a much better price. If you are developing for some clients, then you can have a mini agency bundle, or if you are a big developer agency um, and you want to provide high quality look and feel solutions for your clients, you could do that. Astra. And there are other options in the market as well. Genesis Themes, uh, WP Ocean, you know, many, many, many. To install Astra, we go to the WordPress admin dashboard and select the appearance menu option. It takes us to the themes uh, admin board and then we see that we have three WordPress core themes installed. And in order to install Astra, we are going to go to add new Click on the Add New button, search for Astra in the search box, and the first option that appears is the one that we want. So we click Install. The process takes a few seconds. And once that's done, we can click on Activate. And voila, now Astra is the active theme in our site. And when this process is done, you can see here that there is an Astra option menu that appears under appear, Appearance. Um, and then if we click there, we are taken to the option configuration page of Astra, where we can get access to a variety, a great variety of options to configure the team. Uh, there are some paid options, some about the team that you already have installed, and there are some that you can extend Astra with free plugins. One cool feature of Astra is that it provides access to a great library of pre-built starter templates. Now, starter templates allow you to import a site configuration that gives you a baseline information architecture for your site and implement it with a very nice look and feel. And we can access this library by installing an Astra importer plugin, which actually we can do directly from the configuration page. Here we have this importer starter template section. Um, you can click here to get more information about what starter templates are and then we have the link to install the important plugin. So we're gonna click there, and the plugin is installing and activated automatically. And now, starter templates can be used with the default WordPress editor, which is called Gutenberg, or with some of your favorite page builders, like Elementor, Beaver Builder, Breezy. Uh, we are interested in using Gutenberg because it's the editor that we are using, which is also kind of a site builder, and then, we're gonna click for on that option. Then once the process is done, voila, we are taken to where all the starting the place are. Now we can explore to see what we find. There are quite a few options for us to choose from. Let's take a look at some of them. The, the first one here is a recipe block. If we click on them, we can get a sense of how a site would look like with it. It has four template components, about me page, a blog page, a content information page, and a home page. And notice also that there is the ability to preview how a site would look like with this starter template. We click on it. We are taking it to a demo site that actually is using the starter template. And we can browse around, check how it looks. And imagine how our site would look like with this starter template. Can we tailor it? Uh, can we adapt to the section that it provides? Uh, probably we would like to extend it later on. Here is the blog where probably Rose spends more of her time creating awesome content. And there's also the content information for people to reach out. So that, like this one, there are many other that may suit your specific use case. Uh, and also notice that you could import the complete site, the four template components, and you start with this as your site. Or you can you know, perhaps you have an existing content already, an existing site, and you want to import only a single template component. You can do that as well. So spend some time here finding, you know, if for probably a store, kind of like online store, start the template would work for you, an educational site. There is one for an NGO here that's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure that you may find some that is going to be tailored to your site. So we are building a site for Sarah, who is a yoga instructor. So let's see if we type here yoga, um, we find that there is only one starter template, but it seems that it looks very good. If we go for it, we can see how it looks like. Very nice site, simple design, five template components, including an about me page, a page for classes, 
publications and information about her practice and the topic of yoga and also contact information and so on. So this seems exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and import the complete site. We click on the button of import complete site and we get a dialogue box here that asks us a few questions. Uh, basically, I am, let's say that we are intermediate, that we know a little bit what we're doing, um, but this is really irrelevant because everything is going to be installed and activated for us and I'm creating a site for myself or for a friend. Um, there are some advanced options that we are going to let check that we want basically the whole starting the place to be important. So we click next and then after a uh, friendly message here, ask for information if we want to stay in touch, but we don't want that right now. So we want to skip and the importing process begins. It takes a few seconds as well. And voila, now we have the starting template fully imported. Now we can go here and browse the site and look at that. We have a great starter point. We can browse the section, the classes. This looks very nice. Exactly as we saw when we were browsing the starter template. And now Sarah can tailor this information, change the text, change the images, and she would have a very, very nice site to start with. Now that we have our site set up, our next step is to install and activate the AMP plugin to make sure that Sarah's content is delivered with the best user experience to her user. In the last episode, we went through the process of installing and activating the AMP plugin when we use it for the reader mode. Let's do it over again here, but this time we are going to configure it to use the standard template mode. Remember, if you want to review the template mode, check the AMP plugin episode that has all the explanation about, about it or visit the AMP plugin site. In order to install the AMP plugin, let's go to the plugin section of the admin dashboard. We click here on the left hand side, the plugin section, and we can see here we have a few um, plugins installed. Those are the plugins that were installed during the Astra installation process. Now we are going to go to add new, and then we are going to look for the AMP plugin. Again, the first result here that says the official AMP plugin supported by the AMP team, that's the option that we want. So we're gonna click install. The process again takes a few seconds. And when that's done, we can click activate. And because this is a new site, the first time that the plugin is installed, now we can get this very nice welcome message here on the top. Um, and we see also that there is a menu option here on the left. So we're gonna click open the onboarding wizard to go to the configuration process. Um, the plugin welcomes us and it tells the value proposition of the plugin. I encourage you to read all of this. It's very good information to get a sense of what the plugin does. So we click next. Um, here, remember that the plugin asks us about a technical ability or a technical savviness. Um, and here we are going to select developer or technically savvy, which mean, basically means that we are aware that we want to use the AMP plugin in standard mode, but that requires that we select only AMP compatible components. And Sara is aware of that. She wants her site to be AMP first. Therefore, she's making that decision. Then we are taking to the next section to select the template mode. Remember that the last time we selected the reader mode for that particular scenario. Now we are going to select the standard mode, the ideal configuration for the AMP plugin because the whole site of Sara will be served as um. Then we click as next and here the plugin gives us a review. It reminds us that we are using the standard mode. What does that mean? And that we are using Astra as the active thing. That is what we did before. Now we say uh, next and the plugin save our configuration and it greets us. Okay, your site is ready to serve AMP pages to your users. Uh, and again, it reminds us, reviews what being standard mode means. Yeah, we can do an in, you know, a little browsing of the site, but you know, we can also go back, finish, and then we land on the setting screens of the AMP plugin. Again, if we go back to visit our site, now we see that we are in our own site, and here in the admin bar, we see that this is 
a fully incompatible site. So everything that you're seeing here right now is AMP first, but you have the beauty of the Astra theme with combined with the AMP compatibility that they integrated. This is excellent. We have set up a very nice site for Sara with a high quality theme and full AMP compatibility built in. So now Sara is ready to do three things. One, tailor the section of the site for her own yoga practice, you know, edit the text, put her own images. Also add certain plugins to her site to help her meet her content strategy needs in key areas such as monitoring, monetization, SEO, um, and also launch her site to the world using a good hosting provider. The good news is that there are solutions available for Sara in each of these areas, which are not only very good in terms of their functionality, but also can be used seamlessly in her Amphert site. Now you can explore some of the options available by checking the ecosystem page in the Amp plugin site, or stay tuned because we are going to talk more about this in this series in future episodes. In the last two episodes, we learned how to take advantage of the Amp plugin to bring great user experiences to your users without having to do any coding at all. But if you are a developer or if you have resources to do some development, you can also take advantage of the development tools that the AMP plugin provides to help you tailor your site in any way you want and still being able to bring full AMP power experiences to your users. In the next episode, we are going to help Sara to add other essential components to her site so that she can be successful with her content strategy and with her yoga practice. So let's stay tuned. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and enable notifications and let's make it happen.